Hi, this is Paul Solt from iPhone Dev TV, and I want to give you an uh, introduction to WatchKit. We'll be making our first app today, but before we get into that, I want to point out some common pitfalls and things that you can avoid and, and areas where you can get help so that you're not struggling to make things work, right? So making a WatchKit app is going to be a little frustrating right now. It's in beta, things will break, Xcode will freeze, and I want to show you what you can do. So when Xcode freezes up, what you're just going to need to do is quit it. So you're just going to hit the X and close it. So something like pressing the button up here. And that's actually not what we want to do. That's not going to quit it all the way. So we're going to go to quit Xcode. And I commonly do the shortcut without even thinking, which is command Q. So if I just click on Xcode, command Q, and then we can tell it the stop task. That's going to stop everything. Xcode goes away. Next up, you're going to want to quit the simulator. Sometimes this locks up. You can't install your app. Your app doesn't start. You're going to quit it and doing the same hotkeys, command Q. So that's going to make it go away. Now, if you want to bring it back, just do command space to bring up spotlight. And then you can type beta to get Xcode beta. With that, you can restart your app by clicking on the run and see if that fixes the problem. Now, I have seen that there are some issues where you might need to reset your simulator, so that's what this button will do over here that will reset some of the settings for you and make it so that things can work again. All right, so let's just stop the application. Now what I wanna show you and talk about is how to design the user interface and how that's gonna work. WatchKit's particularly interesting right now because the UI is completely different from how we do UI in an iPhone app. There's no auto layout, and if we pull up the interface, the interface controller, you're gonna see right in here that we are doing a WK interface controller. And what's important to understand here is that this is actually a networked interface. So the changes in code that we're gonna do are actually running on your iPhone app and they're gonna propagate over to the actual watch app. And so there's gonna be a network connection. It's either gonna be Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. It's probably Bluetooth. And it's going to be sending data over, telling the watch what to draw, what to do, based on what's running on the iPhone. And this is powered by the extension framework, which is why you see that all of this code right now is in the extension. So this code is running locally on your iPhone, but it's in a separate process from the code that's gonna be running your main iPhone app. The watch kit needs to work with your iPhone app. They can't run separately. So these two work hand in hand. And the only thing that you're gonna have on the actual watch app that's installed on the device is going to initially be the interface storyboard file. So these are gonna be all your user interface visuals, as well as any images that you include in the images folder here. Okay, so that's an important distinction. Now this is what's currently released. So there are limitations in what you can do. One shining example is right now, there's no way to add a button that can send a message back to the iPhone app to do a task or something like that. So you need to think about how these WatchKit apps are going to behave differently than how you might consider an iPhone app to behave. And there's gonna be shared resources that you need to sort of manage back and forth. Without further ado, let's just take a look at our interface. We've got the interface code here. These are our starting points. And then if we jump back over to the interface file, this is the, the user interface. So let's take a look at this one right here. I'm gonna show you how we can add different things and, and look at different properties. So we have this sidebar here, that's this little button up top. This is gonna to allow us to customize what we see on the screen. So here I had changed the color to an orange color. You can go to another color if you click on other and do something else. However, Apple recommends that when you submit the app, you keep it as a black background to match the black bevel, which sort of makes your interface sort of blend into the design of the actual device. So that's kind of interesting. And you don't need to worry about margins or anything. Put content directly up into the edges, unlike you would with an iPhone app. Now, on the bottom here with this sort of home screen button, this is your object library. You can drag out different components. You can drag out an image, a label, a timer. We're gonna go with a timer because I wanna show you how to work with the timers. And then we've got uh, separator and things like that. So you can move things around and it's a little bit harder to work with. There's no auto layout here. So if you want things to move around, you're really gonna have to use something called a group. A group is gonna allow you to 
put logical information in different places and sort of design the interface that you want to, to lay out. So all we need right now is there with the group, we can create an empty space and, and move our timer down. This timer here is kind of interesting. It's Apple's timer and it is going to run locally on the actual device, which means that we're going to have to do some extra work on our end to actually get updates when it's going to reach its final time and things like that. You can customize different things here. Now, what I want to point out here with positional, there's no auto layout. You can't directly set a position here. You're going to have to set the position to left, center, right. So we can go center here. That's going to move it into the center. Then we can go right. It's going to move it right. If I want it on the, the center of the screen, that's going to place it in the center. And then we can go back to center, center. So let's just put this in the center, center. We don't need the group. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. And the separator is not really where I want it. So I'm just going to click on it and delete it, pushing the delete key. Now we have a, a timer in the very center of our screen. And we can add a, a start button that's going to default to the top. I want the start button to be on the bottom. So I'm going to put it on the bottom. That's going to push it down there. And currently the background color is a, a it's like a, a black color. I'm going to change that to something else so that it just stands out a little bit more. Maybe that's too much contrast for you. Pick whatever colors you want. Now we have this, this UI customized. So if we were to hit play right now, we should see the button. We should see the timer up here and we don't see anything happening with the timer. What happens with the timer is that there's sort of this enabled option. So I guess if I turned on enabled when we were to start the app, we should see it, I believe, counting down or counting up. But there's a, a bug with the positional layout. So the format right here, if I go to short, we might see something different happen on the actual device. So here you can see that it is counting up. For some reason, the positional format, which makes it so that it's a very short format, does not work right now in the current version. So hopefully Apple will fix that and you should submit a bug re request if you see things like this. All right, but I want, I really want the positional and I want to do a countdown timer. So we're going to set an initial size and countdown. One of the other things you're going to notice right here is that it's clipping. And in order to prevent clipping, what I'm going to do is make it so that this is bigger. So I'm just going to drag it out. And over here on the size, you're going to see that it says fixed width. I really don't want fixed width because there's going to be different sizes for the Apple Watches. I'm going to do relative to container. And that's essentially going to allow me to do percentage wise. So I can do 100%, which is going to be a one right here, or I could do something like 50%, which would be a 0.5. And you'd see that it's 50% of the width of the screen. And this is going to be 50% of the width of the smaller screen as well. I'm going to go with one so that it's the full width. And then I'm going to center it using this option right here. So with that, we should have a, a countdown that's positional and it's going to to start here. Now, the preview in seconds, this is just to show you something on the screen here. And you see it says 59, 59. Well, 59 times 60 plus 59 is going to give you this number that you see here. If you were to put in zero here, you'd see that it updates with zero here. And unfortunately, it doesn't display very interestingly here. It's uh, a little limited. So when we actually go into the app, we're going to display something different. And if I were to run this right now, let's see what we see. We just see one. And this is, uh, again, a bug with the positional format. For whatever reason, it just defaults to saying one. I'm going to disable it so it doesn't start when we start. And it's only going to start when we hit this button down here, which we're going to rename to start. All right, so we have the interface here. The one thing that we can do and this is a little bit confusing for me, is that that preview in seconds isn't the same as when you adjust a label here, because this is sort of backed by a label. So I can just say 0000, zero, zero, zero and we don't see that in the interface, but when I click on it, we will see it. And I believe when we run the app, we will see that start time. So that's a little bit weird. I'm going to go in here and say this is going to be 300 for three minutes. I want a three-minute timer. 
just to start, and three minutes over here is gonna be 180 seconds. So we're just gonna go in and fill that. We'll run it again, and we should see that it's saying three minutes here. But when I press start, nothing's going to happen. And so that's what we're gonna have to hook up and interact with code in the next video. So join me in the next video. And if you like this video and you wanna learn more about the Apple Watch, like the video and subscribe for more information about Apple Watch.